Dr. Yes. Patel, it's not a versus question, right? Every time a medical breakthrough happens, we as humans, because of AI, have become uh, very competitive with it. I'm thinking of it from a perspective of perhaps a mother who's finding it difficult to conceive, who has tried IVF. It's painful on the pocket, painful emotionally, painful physically. Surrogacy, not an option anymore legally in India. For them, is this a breakthrough? And on your point of Garva Sanskar, uh, this robo actually uh, can hear. You can talk to the baby. The parents, uh, the parents-to-be can actually communicate, send their voice to the womb through the robot. So all these things have been made possible. But you're right, the need of it perhaps came from infertility, which is on the rise in China. Yes, so I really agree with you that yes, it is a boon for many, but what about its overuse and misuse? Hmm. Like for convenience, hmm. for the career. And how can a woman could be, you will are literally taking away the womanhood from a female. Like a male can say, I don't need you to carry my child anymore. I have a robot to carry it. Do you think you want a society where this type of mentality exists? No. So yes, it's a new, but how do we, how will that robot deliver? Hmm. What is the long-term impact on that baby? Will that baby be a total mechanical baby hmm. with no human feelings, no touch? How do we come to know that? Hmm. So till then, it has to be very, very guardedly taken. And we cannot compare it with the animal world also because you know human are at a different level than the animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So long-term implications, all the mothers, you may find it very interesting, very glamorous, very fantastic mm. new way of having a baby. Mm. But the new baby that you want, the next generation, what type of baby? So that is one thing. And secondly, the countries where it is legal, how can a machinery take over the legal aspect? Mm. Like here in India, it is legal now for some certain number of couples, but it's not legal in China. You can't find a shortcut. Like if I want to kill somebody, I don't do it myself, but if I have a robo fed in who can go and kill that person, is it legal to do that? Then everybody will have such type of robots available who can just by technique go ahead and kill somebody with AI. So right. is this the way you want to take a loop around the legal aspect in a country? I would say no. No, I, I don't want to say it's a new it. way, but at it's the moment, it, it's just a possibility as of now. Let's be real yes, about it. Yes, it's, it's a, a possibility. possibility. The baby, it's very the first fetus. How a male can also feed the baby when yeah. the female is at the job. Female yeah. co can go and feed the baby. Yeah. But the complications, like the gynecologist said, Manisha Singh, is also very important. Hmm. The complications that can happen to the baby is revealed hmm. through the mother. Like hmm. mother gets hypertension, mother gets some hmm. symptoms where the blood, blood flow reduces to the baby, where the water supply to the amniotic fluid goes down. How will a robot be able course, to detect nothing can mimic this? a human mom. Yes, yes. Nothing can mimic the natural way of having a baby. Nobody is saying that. But like I said, this is not a versus. The reason we yes. brought out this report is not to say this is the new way. The reason we brought out this report is to make people aware of how far and beyond science is going. For China to say they will actually make it possible by 2026. Now that's something. That means somewhere some fetus has already been conceived and is ready to be put inside a robo as we speak for them to actually deliver it in 2026. But ma'am, let's come down to the cost now. And like I said, for couples who suffer, who struggle with infertility, uh, you know this better than I do. It's a real one. It's not just the emotional toil, it's not just the physical toil, it's not just how expensive it is. It's an overall approach. Uh, surrogacy today as well costs anywhere, even yes. when it was legally done in India, costs anywhere between 30 to 40 lakhs. This one will cost just about 12 lakhs. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the cost is around 12 lakhs, yes, mm. but then the overall cost of maintaining it for nine months and delivery. Cost apart, I feel really it's a boon for a lady who doesn't have a uterus, born without uterus, not taking help of a surrogate, who is independently taking care of her baby as the way she wants, not dependent on a surrogate. I think it's a wonderful idea. Mm. It's a boon because any female will not be deprived now of taking care of her own child, even outside the uterus, 
before the baby is born. Hmm. So that's a wonderful concept, I feel. Hmm. But that cost will all be in addition. This is just the price. After that, maintaining it for the nine months, feeding it, oxygenation, etc., will be all added cost and then the delivery. So the final amount, what it will cost till delivery, which is say 30 lakhs right now in India or $100,000, $200,000 in, in USA, we don't know what it would come to be at the end of the day when hmm. the final delivery happens from this particular technology. Right. But yes, as you said, it will give a lot of independence to the females who have problems with the uterus, who cannot carry a baby or born without uterus. They will feel a lo lot more confident and yeah, independent. Yeah, like I said, there is a possibility a now. Excellent idea. Yeah, yes. there is a possibility. Dr. Patel, you know, this story got me thinking that if a robo can deliver a baby in 12 lakhs, why is the cost of this entire infertility sector in India so expensive? Any female who above 30 uh, who has frozen their eggs or that embryo or undergoing IVF will tell you how painful and how expensive it is, especially so because there is no insurance cover. So yes, can, you, insurance can you take us, can you take us through what is required here then? of the robot before that creating the embryo will need the IVF part mm -hmm. and that IVF part is also equally costly or slightly higher in China mm -hmm. so if in India you consider a cost of IVF is 250,000 2.5 lakhs it's a little higher in China so before they put an embryo inside what happens is they have created this womb that will be put into a humanoid robot Right. So what like a bio we do inside, hmm. it will be the hmm. embryo. So for hmm. that, we need to do IVF. We need to stimulate the female, take her eggs out in hmm. the lab, fertilize with the husband's sperms. Hmm. And hmm. once that embryo forms, so that cost is excluded in this. Whereas yeah. in our surrogacy, that is always included. Sure. So that will happen. Then it goes inside the uterus. Hmm. And then the process starts if it survives. If hmm. it does not survive in the robo or is it rejected, that studies have not come out hmm. that can also get rejected in a robo and again the same procedure will happen sure. so it is not an alternative to ivf treatment and the cost it is an alternative to surrogacy where ivf procedure takes place frozen freezing of embryos take place but the surrogate is not a carrier it is a human uh, robo which is a carrier and gets the delivery so part rewards done. remain the same is what you're saying i agree with that but dr patel my question was slightly different i'm trying to understand why are uh, why is the whole cr process of fertility so expensive in india and what can be done to actually bring it under a medical cover to ensure that people have an easier ride in these very stressed out lives that all of us live in urban jungles? How can you ensure that this becomes not, an, not a thing that only the very affluent can afford? Yes, yes. So now it is going down the cost. The first thing is India is one of the cheapest in the world as far as IVF and infertility treatment is concerned. Even the countries like Kenya and Tanzania, the IVF is costlier than what it is in India. So I would say India has one of the cheapest IVF treatment. But the unfortunate part is that not all IVF cases are successful. There is a certain success rate, say 30%, 40%, 60%, mm. depending on the patient profile. And unfortunately, the Indian ethnicity, the eggs of the Indian women get aged and infertile earlier than the Western counterparts or the African counterparts. Mm. So we in India biologically age six years earlier than our Western counterpart. Mm. Now when we are starting our career, we are looking at it, we feel 35 is a normal age to conceive. But unfortunately, the Indian females start losing out on the quality and quantity of sure. their eggs by the age yeah. of 32. So mm. that is making even the results get more difficult in India. Mm. But mm. the cost part is mainly due to the disposables, media, the procedure, the technology, hmm. the investment in the labs. Hmm. And then there are repeated failures that adds to the cost. But I would hmm. definitely vouch that India is one of the cheapest hmm. countries as far as IVF treatment is concerned. Hmm. Well, anybody who's taken IVF will tell you otherwise. Uh, but yes, that's a good perspective. Compared to the world, we do have it cheaper. Can we make it more affordable? Can we add it under the insurance cover? All those yes, questions that, would be that very all nice. those questions still remain. Insurance is not available. Yes. We should get insurance and we should fight for that. Why infertility is not there in the insurance? Yeah. All right, Dr. Patel, thank you so much for joining us with all those insights over there.
Thank you so much for having me.